gospel according to Mark, the eighth chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus went on with his disciples to the villages of Caesarea Philippi. And on his way, he asked his disciples, Who do people say that I am? And they answered him, John the Baptist, and others Elijah, still others one of the prophets. Jesus asked them, But who do you say that I am? Peter answered him, You are the Messiah. And he sternly ordered them not to tell anyone about him. Then Jesus began to teach them that the Son of Man must undergo great suffering and be rejected by the elders, the chief priests, and the scribes, and be killed, and after three days rise again. He said this quite openly. And Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him. But turning and looking at his disciples, Jesus rebuked Peter and said, Get behind me, Satan, for you are setting your mind not on divine things, but on human things. Then Jesus called the crowd with his disciples and said to them, If any want to become my followers, let them deny themselves, take up their cross, and follow me. For those who want to save their life will lose it, and those who lose their life for my sake and for the sake of the gospel will save it. For what will it profit them to gain the whole world and forfeit their life? Indeed, what can they give in return for their life? Those who are ashamed of me and of my words in this adulterous and sinful generation, of them the Son of Man will be also ashamed when he comes in the glory of his Father with the holy angels. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise Today, we are beginning something brand new in this faith community. That little black box mounted on the pillar over there is a camera. And sometime later this week, from the comfort of wherever your computer is, or laptop may be, we'll be able to watch this sermon all over again. Why you'd want to do that, I don't know. But you can. When I told a friend this idea, he said, well, now no one will have to come to church at all. To which I replied, they're not coming anyway. Why not just go where they are? And so we will. Seriously, this could be a boon to our shut-ins who can't come, the stubborn who won't come, and those who would like to attend, but in the beginning, choose to do so, but only at a safe distance. It may also help us terminally shy Lutherans to do some evangelism. Soon, we're actually going to be giving you business cards that say, check out our church from home, that you can give to family and friends and say, in your bravest Lutheran evangelist voice. Want to see what we do at St. John's? Then you can go hide behind something large, like a pillow or a big potted plant. The scurrying will be good exercise. And one never knows about these things. The person may follow you, ask a few questions about church, might even be tempted to attend. If they do, great. And if they throw the card away at the first opportunity, it has only cost you a business card and a red face from actually talking in public about your faith. I only wish we were starting this whole process with better texts, where I could be a small-time Joel Osteen, offering a self-help scheme for success in everything from better relationships to bigger bank balances to unblemished skin. Sadly, today's gospel won't let me do that because Jesus is once again pointing us to the cross and reminding us that much as we would like, we can't have church without it. That's a problem for us who want to pack the place with people. 
Most folk want to hear a pep talk on a better life. We offer them the cross. Dr. Fred B. Craddock asked the central question that haunts us all. Why would we put at the center of our faith a symbol of a man slumped dead on a cross? The truth is, we wouldn't. But the facts are that this is what Jesus gives us. And we are as troubled by it as was Peter. Up until now, things to be, seemed to be going swimmingly for Jesus and his ministry. On the right track, wrong track poll question, Peter would have unequivocally answered right track. He had watched the excitement as Jesus healed the sick, cleansed the lepers, calmed the storm, raised the dead, fed the multitudes, and even, for God's sakes, walked on water. You don't get much better than that. Looking around at all Jesus has done, Peter can conclude, you are the Christ, the Son of the living God. You are the Messiah, the one for whom we have been waiting. You are it. You are the one. And then Jesus drops the bomb. The roadshow is over. They are headed for Jerusalem, and things are going to get ugly. Following him is going to mean suffering, rejection, death, 